Hi guys, as hard as this will be for you to believe, it is an outrageously over the top gorgeous day here in paradise in the end times along the banks of Buckeye Creek <clears throat> above Bridgeport, California here on this just splendid feels like a an October morning but it is actually Thursday morning August 11th 2016 so Thursday morning is when I bring you my <coughs> depressed collapsitarian whine of the week this is not a rant this is a whine okay and anyone who wants to sit around and listen to some old depressed collapsitarian whine for I don't know how long I'm gonna whine for how long I'm gonna around but you're welcome to sit around and listen uh, as I celebrate it's five weeks today so I'm on day 36 today of my sojourn in the wilderness being alone in the wilderness so this is close enough to 40 days in the wilderness to have this wine but I'm gonna kick off this wine with this unintentionally hilarious you can figure out why quote from my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero John Muir from about a hundred years ago he probably wrote these words right up here in Yosemite about six miles as the jaybird flies from here climb the mountains and get their glad tidings nature's peace will flow into you as sunshine flows into trees the winds will blow their own freshness into you and the storms their energy while cares drop off like autumn leaves and there you go thank you john muir for uh telling me how my cares will drop off like autumn leaves if i will just get up to the fresh air and, and the sunshine of the high sierras where as i say i have now been for five weeks heading into my sixth straight week alone in the high sierras well of course i've got the company of my little dog sancho ponza i don't know if john muir had a dog with him or not so uh anyway what have i been thinking about what is your old depressed collapsitarian what has been going rattling through my tangled brain over the past week since my last one of these wines a week ago and i, and I want to clear up a misconception from my last wine just in case any of you have to listen to that have some misconception that I am out here in paradise suffering some dark night of the soul. I, I just want to lay that concern to rest. Uh, it's not exactly like I've been curled up in a fetal position in my tent uh, 24 hours a day out here in paradise. Uh, my own dark night of the soul and I have had a few in the past. I foresee that one, I don't know, about six weeks out. How I would describe the last week of my life, or the past six weeks, five or six weeks, or the year 2016, is more like it's just a, a steady, gradual, just spinning my wheels and just digging a little bit deeper into the velvet lined rut of my life uh, the the noose around my neck just tightening a little bit more the sword of damocles descending millimeter by millimeter towards the top of my tangled mine and of course I, I look at this being an eco-nazi 
as I, I, I can make the comparison between what's going on in my own spiraling down out of control life as, as the center dissolves and it's just, it just as I begin to literally crack up here in the end times. This, of course, is a my own little microcosmic example of what is happening on a planetary level. I would describe the situation on the planet here in the middle of 2016 pretty much as a planet like myself digging ourselves that much deeper into a rut velvet lined or not that's going to make it that much more impossible to ever get out of as the planet eaters in the new world order tighten their noose around uh, everybody in all this every living thing on this planet and as the sword of damocles moves a little bit closer so 36 days alone in the wilderness and this really is the most the most isolated I have ever been in my entire life right here in the most populated state in the United States of America uh, I'm, I'm a lot more isolated here than I ever was in the Peruvian Amazon jungle for instance I'm sure as shit a lot more isolated here than I was in St. Croix uh, for the first half of this year living in my tent up in the jungle there so if depression if, if one measure of depression is how many meals you have eaten alone without breaking bread with a fellow human since I only eat twice a day instead of three times a day I guess I'm up to what about 72 73 straight meals that I have eaten alone well except for my little dog begging from me uh, I have not spoken one word on a telephone with a single human being that I know. This is the longest stretch in my entire life that I have ever gone without literally having a conversation with, you know, a friend or a family member. Now, I've gotten a few short emails, don't get me wrong. Uh, so anyway, here I, here I sit with my tangled brain and one thing I've been doing filling up my time is reading a lot of good books and including Earth Odyssey, the number one best Bible of the Apocalypse. It's one of the all-time great ones. I'll come back to it on Sunday. But this book and, and several others I've been reading have been talking about where the authors have visited Sub-Saharan Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa trying to describe in words what uh, this fellow, Mark Hertzgard, calls the indescribable squalor, the, the absolute living hell that they witnessed in Sub-Saharan Africa that is literally beyond their ability to put into words to make even a welfare recipient in the United States understand the level just of the, of the ninth ring of hell and hundreds of millions of people it looks like oh, we have a B-52 bomber coming across Bridgeport, uh, California here. A couple of B-52 bombers 
There you go. So anyway, uh, as I've been reading these descriptions uh, of this indescribable squalor in Sub-Saharan Africa, you know, these authors and so many other people allude, you know, in talking about this, about how, and this you hear from the, these clueless morons who have never been depressed, trying, I guess, to, tr trying, this is how a clueless moron who's never been depressed, I, I guess they're trying to cheer up a depressed person by, by acting like, y y you know, dude, you have no right to be depressed. You could be a sub-Saharan African living in a UN refugee camp in South Sudan. And because you are not living in a UN refugee camp in South Sudan, you have no right, you have not earned the right to be depressed about your own teeny weeny little life or the state of the planet. So I guess this is supposed to make a depressed person feel better that, uh, yes, there's hundreds of millions of our fellow humans, if not probably, I mean, my guess, three or four billion uh, of our fellow humans living in indescribable squalor, and that you're not one of them, you should be you, 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 you have not earned the right to be depressed. You know, just the sick, twisted laugh I get out of that, which gets back, I've had this rant about gratitude. You guys, you know, for, for any clueless moron who's never been depressed, who doesn't understand this, you can be grateful, okay? <laughs> you, you can... Be grateful, as I am, that you're not a sub-Saharan African living in a UN refugee camp in South Sudan and still be depressed. As, as I said last week in my rant, <clears throat> and I will repeat, probably the number one reason I do not kill myself is out of fear that I might be reincarnated into a sub-Saharan African. If, if I take myself out and reincarnation turns out to be real, there's a three out of four chance that's exactly where I would be reborn is in sub-Saharan Africa. It's the one thing keeping me alive. So yes, I, I am very grateful uh, that I, I am not a sub-Saharan African, yet that does nothing to allay my desire to go to sleep tonight and never wake up again and just have the lights turn out. They're, they're two separate things, guys. Okay? It, it is... Sub-Saharan Africa, those people living in that squalor are just one of the many reasons that I am depressed, that I am a depressed collapsitarian. And uh, getting, you know, and, and, and getting back to John Muir here and that quote I just read, and, 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 and guys, again, uh, all, all of these little platitudes about gratitude that uh, about gratitude and depression uh, I, I am extremely grateful for the absolute paradise that I live in here in, in the bosom of mother nature I mean how many people can say can you say for instance that when you go to take a shit every morning that you might encounter a David Attenborough film crew between your bedroom and your bathroom. 
or the ghost of Ansel Adams or the ghost of John Muir. Just which, as I said last week, the biggest thrill of my life is my daily walk to the outhouse to take a shit. It, it, it's an absolutely glorious experience in nature that I am extremely grateful to, to enjoy every day the sublime pleasure. I don't have many pleasures in my life and so the sublime pleasure of, of walking to the outhouse is nice and but but you know I'm sorry uh, brother John Muir uh, it, it's it's still not enough of anything walking out in nature just reminds you of uh, of all of the nature that is being destroyed uh, by too many people eating too much stuff that every day on this planet y your ability to do what I do every day is shrinking. So yes, I am grateful that I am able to enjoy the sublime pleasures that John Muir was enjoying a hundred years ago but, uh, it, 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 you know, it's, it, it's, it's not enough. And meanwhile, so I just sink deeper and deeper into this absolutely hopeless, dark depression about my teeny-weeny little future and the future forecast of this planet, which is a... UN refugee camp in South Sudan. That is my forecast for planet or for the prison planet Earth. And it's pretty much, at least on a psychic, spiritual level, my, my own forecast. Now, don't get me wrong, if I was, <clears throat> if, 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 if I was some clueless fucking moron wage slave locked into some soul-killing job and I was here in paradise for 30 days knowing that I was going back to some absolutely soul-killing job uh, in, in a few days, you better believe uh, I would sound a lot more like John Muir but when it's not a vacation, when it is your life, when you are genuinely homeless and this is your life, you know, it's, it, it, it's, just a, it's just an experience, again, you can't describe to people. And, and it's just this absolute, Thing that you know this contradiction that I, I, I just cannot I cannot reconcile inside my brain why with every day that I get farther and farther away from the world of clueless moron human affairs the more and more feral I become, uh, what is it that I still miss about at least social intercourse, if not sexual, then I'm just talking the social intercourse with my fellow humans. What is it? What is it, Hambone, uh, that, that you're bitching about? But when you, every time, you find yourself in the company of your fellow humans, you're going off on a goddamn clueless moron roundup rant, and so you run out here and try to hide from them, and then you miss being with your fellow humans. I, I you know, guys, I don't get it. This is one thing that I've been wrestling on is this contradiction, and, uh, uh, it just, it's just like, 
Okay, hey, on. What was your, quote, plan coming out here? Where were you one year ago today? One year ago today, try to remember where you were, dude, when the universe, the universe was working for you. Your plans were working out. Where I was, for the few of you who might remember this, I was in Doomsday Trailer, West Coast, in Sebastopol, California, working for this absolutely nasty, nasty, petty tyrant, clueless moron, fucking bitch from hell fixing up this goddamn piece of shit trailer of hers for $15 an hour eating this fucking bitch's shit day in and day out for uh, I believe uh, it was 18, about three weeks last August suffering this unendurable hell uh, so I could make $15 an hour, which was less than she was paying the Mexicans working for her at the same time I was working for her. And the, in the epilogue of that story, I, might, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, is that that cheap-ass bitch actually fucked me out of $250. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, is, is that... Would that make you happy, Hambone? Is that where you want to be? Uh, slaving away for some clueless fucking moron, petty tyrant bitch in some goddamn run-down trailer for minimum wage uh, in, instead of sitting here in paradise by yourself? I wouldn't go back to that trailer. That bitch couldn't get me back there for $500 a day, much less $100 a day. So it's just like, uh, I, you know, what, what, what's going to make you happy, dude? You know, this whole thing, uh, speaking of the universe, as long as we're talking about these platitudes uttered by, by well-meaning clueless morons who have never been depressed, trying to, what, cheer up depressed people. There's this one, and it's not just depression, it's just any sort of hardship that anyone is, no matter what the hardship is, whether it be financial, emotional, physical, spiritual, whatever, if you've ever been, and we've all been there, and we have had some clueless moron and, 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 and a well-meaning effort to cheer us up saying one of the versions of this put it in God's hands put it in God's hands uh, or if they're not a clueless moron wacko religious fanatics then it's <clears throat> turn it over to spirit turn it over to spirit or let the universe handle it. Spirit, universe, God, choose your word. You, you, we have all heard some version of this when we were stuck in a rut. Velvet line though, it's not that the, the advice to get out of this rut is to just turn your troubles over to, and I will choose the universe, but put your own word in here. Uh, so anyway, so last year I trusted the universe coming out here to California uh, on a on a lick in a prayer uh, and the universe came through for me if, if uh, slaving away 
in, in, in a run-down trailer working for a petty tyrant, clueless moron bitch. To that level, uh, the universe actually worked out for me. So this year, 2016, let, 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 let's look at it. Uh, first, when I was down there in St. Troy trying to figure out 2016, it, uh, I turned it over to the universe. And good God, what the universe, I haven't even told you the story from St. Troy yet, what really went down there this spring. And what happened? So I turned it over to the universe, oh, about the 1st of April. April Fool's Day, and what did the universe do? The universe fucked me. And I said, okay, universe, you fucked me on this one. So what did I do? I went and I turned my life over to the universe a second time and came out here to California making the clueless moron assumption that since it worked last year, it was going to work again this year. And guess what? The universe fucks me. And so now, what am I doing? Since I have no other choice, I'm turning it over to the universe. A third time in one year, I'm turning my life over to the universe. And while I won't exactly say that the universe is fucking me right now, uh, as I say, my own uh, forecast for the rest of this year and the rest of my life, uh, I'm losing faith in the universe. But, but obviously, guys, uh, the wisdom that, that I've come up with here in, in uh, the past five weeks is peeling back the layer of the onion, one more, one more layer. Guys, the universe has not fucked me. God, the universe, spirit has not fucked me uh, this year any more than the universe or God or spirit answered my prayers last year. I understand this. This is one thing I have figured out being a depressed collapsitarian is, and, and, and I got some news, uh, news flash for anybody turning their teeny weeny little lives over to the universe or advising their depressed friends to do that. News flash. The universe does not give a fuck about your teeny weeny little life. Do you get it? God does not give a shit about your puny little life. The, the only reason uh, that, that you are the spoiled little brat pig an overstuffed American consumer that you are and that you're not living in, in a goddamn UN refugee camp in South Sudan is just a, a complete throw of the cosmic dart. You are not being rewarded through karma. Karma does not give a shit about you, your depressed friends, that, that, that the adorable little planet nibbling bundle of joy of yours. You know, it, it, the universe could care less whether I or you are, are living in a fucking mansion in Beverly Hills or a UN refugee camp in South Sudan. You know, pull your head out of your ass. Uh, talk about being egotistical, thinking that the fucking universe or God gives a shit about your teeny weeny little life. 
you know? I get so sick and tired of it. Uh, you know, hearing here this shit. I mean, that this song, uh, Bus Load of Faith by uh, by Lou Reed. If you if you have never if you're any sort of a depressed collapsitarian and and are not familiar with the C D New York Stories. New York Stories by Lou Reed, one of one of the great uh, depressed collapsitarian uh, anthems of all times. New York Stories by Lou Reed, every song on it. This song bus load of faith that you're going to need a bus load of faith to get by and what Lou who was definitely a depressed collapsitarian was talking he was talking about this in in this song and on throughout this CD this very thing about how you can't depend on anything and, you know, you can't believe your own mother. They, 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 you, you just can't depend. But, you know, as he points out, I think it was in Busload of Faith, uh, that you can't depend on the worst always happening. You know, sometimes things actually work out for the better sometimes they work out for the worst. You cannot count on anything that you have no control over it. It is completely beyond your control how things turn out. Uh, and it takes a busload of faith to get by just to get through the goddamn day. If, uh, as uh, Woody Allen, I've mentioned this many times, you know, his, his point about this is if you can just stay in the camp, in the camp of the basically miserable and not in the course of your day or the course of your life actually tumble into the truly horrible, then that is a measure of a successful life to just to be basically miserable and instead of truly horrible, the indescribable horror that at least half of this planet lives in. If you can just stay on this side of that line with a bus load of faith, then uh, I guess you should be grateful. But if you're counting on the fucking universe to, uh, if you're handing your life o over to the universe or God or spirit uh, to have things turn out for you, good luck goddamn egotistical, conceited, hopelessly clueless moron. And uh, so here I sit, and that's heading in to the sixth week of isolation here in the wilderness. And guys, I honestly don't know, I honestly, literally do not know where I am going to be the day after tomorrow because there's a little whisper from spirit that it might be time for me to pack up my tent and head back to the city. You know, I, I, I love this. The, the, the last time I was with friends, this friend of mine is not a clueless moron, just asking me just to make conversation. You know, so Hammond, where are you going to be next winter? What are your plans for next winter? And I just looked at her and I laughed and I, plans for next winter? I don't know where I am going to be or what I am going to be doing next week, much less next winter. Next winter, six months from now, is just, it is, 
Good God. You know. And uh, this, this, this other thing that has been rattling around in my brain, and this will be the last thing I talk about in this wine since I realize I'm talking to myself, is, you know, the, the, it, and, and I love my friends dearly. How many times have I said this? But, guys, it's just, you, you know, I'm just more and more like, oh, okay, how about it? If you could snap your fingers and be sitting around a dinner table, have breaking bread, having dinner and drinks and whatnot with a bunch of your clueless, lovable, moron friends back in Austin, Texas. Just put yourself in this social intercourse situation with people you love and who love you and breaking bread together. Uh, what would the, the, what would the subject be going around the table? And, and you know, I've just, I've just lost the ability to have social intercourse. You know, what, 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 are, what are people talking about? You know, at my age now, a lot of anybody, you know, with, with their grandkids, I have this, you know, this one friend, one of my best friends on the planet, her life has been uh, completely uh, co-opted by this little two-year-old, which is all because her daughter is the spawn of Satan, and, and, and her fucking whore junkie daughter just tossed her child, her illegitimate gangster child, off on mama just like she did her pit bull a few years ago so now my friend's life has been ruined by the, this fucking little two-year-old bundle of joy and, 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 and you know it's getting there showing her little pictures on her smartphone uh, of her cute little bundle of joy two-year-old and, and, and I'm just sitting there just biting my tongue just not the uh, erupting to uh, to talk, you know, when she's talking about her little adorable bundle of joy, two-year-old. That I that that that, that I, I just it's it's everything I can do, guys. Not to say you, you do realize, darling, don't you? That your little two-year-old planet nibbling bundle of joy in, in the course of his lifetime is is minimally going to be witness to if not a direct victim of uh, of a series of unimaginable horror that he has to face as any two-year-old on this planet is, is, is going to suffer the level of horror in, in their lifetime that your clueless moron imagination cannot imagine. I'm talking Dante's ninth ring of hell. You know, wouldn't wouldn't that go over well? And then, of course, there's they start bringing out their fucking smartphones, sharing their little photos, going on Facebook while they're sitting there in a group of their own friends. So, uh, what am I going to say? What what do I have to say to these people anymore? You know, talking about their home improvement plans, their vacation plans, their little planet nibbling bundles of joy. So I guess I have Sancho Panza to talk about. The one joy in my life is this little dog. You know, so I'm thinking, guys, what we need to do here, we need to have a, a, a Humpty Dumpty tribe meetup, a, a Press collapsitarian meetup uh, sometime in the next year, and uh, 
we can all sit around. Why don't we all meet at a, I don't know, maybe the the Love Canal McDonald's uh, on the next Earth Overshoot Day 2017, which will probably be sometime around mid-February, around Valentine's Day. Maybe that would be a good place for us to all meet at the Love Canal McDonald's and, uh, and, and talk about the latest oil spill in the Amazon jungle. I don't know, maybe the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico. We could talk about, oh, Paul Beckwith's latest YouTube video about the uh, climate crisis this planet is in. I, I you know, I, I think it, it could just, you know, may, maybe we could even get a pitch in our money and get uh, Guy McPherson to come talk to us about how uh, humanity and this planet are going to go Venus and be extinct in uh, 14 years from now. And wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't we be a barrel of monkeys to hang around with? But uh, I've got my own little, my own little joyful monkey to hang around with now. Yeah, he is saying, Pop, wrap it up. It's time to take a walk to the outhouse so I can find some chitties. Yes, anybody who is a depressed collapsitarian, all kidding aside, if you don't have a dog, go to the pound like I did and let a little dog pick you out the one thing the universe has done for me, the one blessing the universe has bestowed on me in year 2016 is my little emotional support animal and my sidekick, Sancho Panza. So Sancho Panza and I are going to head up the creek to the outhouse talk to the ghost of John Muir for this rambling and depressed collapsitarian whine until next week. Bye guys. Bye guys.